Now to an exclusive on the beat, Paul Manafort's secret memo making his case for getting a job with Donald Trump. We have Manafort's actual memo. This is a document which has never been published in its entirety. It's actually a fascinating read, especially given that we now know Bob Mueller's investigators warned Manafort he could be indicted. Now we have the five pages that Manafort wrote back in 2016. This is from New York Times reporter Glenn Thrush. He first wrote about Manafort's written appeal for a campaign job earlier this year. Thrush did not release the entire memos at the time, and the memo shows Manafort making his case as a volunteer laborer who'd fight the Washington establishment and shows how he played down his potential links to Russia. Manafort approached Trump in February when there were primary victories being racked up, but Trump was facing that revolt from the establishment with talk of a contested convention and heartburn over his racial controversies. This was the headline, the day of Manafort's memo. Tonight, the Klan controversy exploding around Donald Trump after refusing to condemn the KKK's former leader, what he's saying now and what we found him saying years ago. Plus, tensions boil over at Trump's rally. And tonight, some Republican leaders alarmed, scrambling to stop it. Manafort wrote that very day, trying to play on Trump's ego and pl promising to deploy the skills of an insider. He said, quote, continue to manage the campaign the same Nothing really needs to change on what Manafort called track one, winning the primaries. But he warned of a revolt on track two, the convention, where Manafort writes that Trump's enemies in the party establishment would fight him there, stack key committees with never Trumpers, and use the platform to undermine Trump's position on key issues. Now, remember that because Bob Mueller may scrutinize why Russia got such cozy treatment in that platform. Now, that's the why. Then there is the who Manafort says he was. This secret memo showing Manafort pitched himself as that rare species in Republican consulting, an altruistic free bird willing to volunteer for months on end with no compensation. Quote, I'm not looking for a paid job, he wrote. And Manafort's notes asked a Trump advisor, Tom Barak, to use that to make the case. Now remember that as well. Because while it is legal to volunteer for a campaign, no problem, it's not legal to donate your services if they were compensated by any illegal source. And finally, there's who Manafort says he was not. He wrote he was not a part of the Washington establishment, not someone with client relationships dealing with Washington, not someone with Washington baggage, and not cozy with the political establishment in Washington. Out of nowhere, he added, my blood enemy in politics is Karl Rove, who Manafort cast as an insider trying to stop Trump by playing up his anti-Washington work. Now, Manafort was also playing down the clients he had instead of D.C. Republicans, dictators like Ferdinand Marcos and Putin-backed figures like Yanukovych and Putin-linked oligarchs like Oleg Karpovsky. Now, the only time Manafort even brought up that work in the memo was to distance himself from it, saying his work with Black Manafort Stone, the Stone-linked firm, who actually spoke, of course, to investigators on the Hill today, was all over. Quote, I've not been a partner with Roger Stone since we sold the firm in 1992, he wrote. And having begun the memo by promising Trump that he didn't have to change, stoking that emotional ego, Manafort closed with a flourish to the financial ego. Quote, I live in Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue, he wrote, even including the specific apartment number in case you wanted verification. An outsider, a fighter, a supporter, a tenant. Those were the core messages that Manafort delivered to Trump before they teamed up for one of the most chaotic upsets in American politics. Neither man could have known how quickly their paths would diverge. Trump becoming the tenant of the most prized public housing in America, Manafort finding his home raided and his lawyers trying to spare him indictment and any risk of becoming a tenant in some of the scariest facilities in America. I'm joined now by Glenn Thrush, who reported this story out and obtained those memos, as well as former federal prosecutor Renato Mariotti. Uh, Glenn, how might investigators look at the way these two men linked up and what we've learned from your reporting here? Well, what you have to view this uh, through is the prism of what we have learned really over the last couple of weeks. We know that Bob Mueller has sifted through these tens of thousands of Paul Manafort emails, and several of them pertain to interactions he had with a Russian oligarch in which he reportedly offered this guy weekly briefings on what the Trump campaign was up to. So it's clear that Manafort was obviously uh, mixing 
both of his businesses. What is less clear is what were his motivations. Were they nefarious? Were they commercial? Uh, were they just uh, relatively innocent? It's impossible to sort of tell from the, from the info that is out there what, uh, what his motivations were, but this much is clear. People at the time on the campaign wondered why this guy was hanging around, why he would have pulled himself sort of out of semi-retirement in American politics to jump on the, on the campaign of somebody who seemed certain to lose. Uh, and, and what was interesting is the person you mentioned, Tom Barrack, is a, is a longtime friend of the president's. He was the chairman of the inaugural committee. He's somebody uh, to whom the president speaks with quite a bit. He's an enthusiastic backer of the president. He also happens to be fairly close to Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner. And the, the, the provenance of the Manafort letter also tells you about what, how this particular world worked. Barrack got it from Manafort, and Barrack handed it to Ivanka, who then handed it to Donald Trump, who then liked what he saw. And my sources at the time, I wrote that story, told me that Trump was especially impressed by two factors. The fact that Manafort wanted to work for free. Trump loves it when people work for free. <laughs> and the fact that Manafort had already given him money in the form of purchasing a co-op in Trump Tower. So Manafort rang all of Trump's bells, uh, and thus this relationship, which is of such great consequence, was born. Such great consequence. Uh, your reporting really fleshes that out. And Renato, I mean, Glenn makes the point uh, that the money wasn't coming into Manafort from the campaign, and yet there was a quote unquote mixing. Um, as a former federal prosecutor, is that an area of investigative interest, and when does mixing potentially become misconduct? Well, um, what I would say, you know, my takeaway it was very, in, this document was certainly a very interesting read. And, and I think that Mueller's team would also take a look at it uh, in, in, uh, in, with great interest. And I think that, you know, you could put this document in context of the recent revelation we heard that there were emails um, that Manafort sent essentially trying to, you know, appear, appear to sell, be selling access to a Russian billionaire. I mean, you, get, you wonder when somebody is doing, willing to do something for free, what do they get out of it? Is that a crime, uh, and, Renato? Well, you know, it's not in a straightforward way. It's not a crime. In other words, in and of itself, it may not be a crime, but it, it could be. And so it's a little bit of a complicated question. In other words, if he's lying to someone to uh, get money, that could be a crime. If he's concealing what he's doing from the Trump campaign, that could make it a crime. Um, if it's he's getting income from that, that he's not reporting in his tax returns. And we found out today uh, there was further reporting that confirmed what we knew, that uh, that uh, Mueller was looking, uh, working with the IRS to get tax return information on Manafort and investigating tax crimes. So, um, you know, if you if he wasn't disclosing income from foreign sources, uh, if he wasn't disclosing that inco info in his tax return, that could get him in trouble. And I think the, the, the issue for Manafort is, you know, whenever you are uh, hiding uh, activities you're doing with foreign governments or people tied to foreign governments, it's a very explosive thing that, uh, you know, ultimately a jury wouldn't like and a judge would not like at sentencing. And so, uh, right. and you know, it, it, it paints, it, I mean, yeah. what it paints is a problematic picture for Paul Manafort. The biggest question in Washington uh, is knowledge, Glenn. It's whether Trump knew or came to know that and how he reacted to it, or the best theory of the case from the Trump criminal defense team is that he was out of the loop and that as he learned, he changed. So sometimes we show clips of politicians about uh, inconsistencies. Other times, the Trump theory of the case would be, well, no, when he learned, he distanced himself. That's what you're supposed to do if you find the wrong person on the team. Here is Trump over the, over the months about Manafort. Paul Manafort has done an amazing job. He's here someplace. Where's Paul? Paul Manafort. Oh, good. You made it. Paul Manafort has done a fantastic job. Paul Manafort was replaced long before the election took place. He was only there for a short period of time. Uh, it, it changes fast, mm. Glenn, from vital to, you know, who is that guy? He was here for a second. Um, but does your reporting shed any light on whether Donald Trump came to learn more about Paul Manafort or really knew the whole time? I don't think it's, I don't think it's clear. The issue with Trump is, you know, what we're learning now, and we, and we learned with his son Don Jr. and his interactions with the Russians, is that it's often done through these intermedi intermediaries. Trump drifts in and out of meetings. 
he deals with sort of the vagaries of these things. Manafort, you know, again, was brought on principally to deal with the issues of the convention, mm -hmm. which were not small issues at the time. Trump was really facing an insurrection. We saw that, I think, pretty graphically in Ted Cruz refusing to explicitly endorse him during the convention. So I think Trump was, my, my sense of this is Trump may have been a little bit more distant than others in his family who dealt with, with Manafort directly. And the one element of truth that Trump, you know, I, I guess when you watch those clips, and they are astounding, Ari, and we've seen it mm -hmm. over and over again with people drifting in and out of his world, which version of those events is true? Right. Was Trump telling the truth when he, when he was lavishing praise on Manafort, or was he telling the truth when he said he didn't know him very well? I think the answer to that question is going to be the one right. that really tells right. the, the story in this and case. And other people mm -hmm. may weigh in on that under oath. i got to tell you, uh, your reporting I always like to read, and your evidence, this memo was also very interesting. Interesting. Glenn Thrush from the New York Times. Thank you. Former prosecutor Renato Mariotti. Thanks, Thank you both. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.